what's your response to I mean yeah uh, ang laki ng kailangan gasos in for the third telco uh what's your response to those jitters na I don't know parang magkakaroon ng uh, uh issues when it comes to funding because of course uh uh Udena is uh taking a hit because of the pandemic uh looking at the financials of the company uh of the holding company overall uh what's your response to those concerns well uh okay first we need to put things in its uh, to be objectively speaking right i mean Udena corp is in a different situation or the Udena group not Udena corp but the Udena group co- of companies is, is a different situation because these are uh, subjected to uh, the usual credit uh, valuations, uh, and they're they're done by the they're done at the group level. Now I I, I don't want to talk too much about the, the rest of the Dena group because that's not uh, it's not, I guess not appropriate mm-hmm. to discuss that. Yes, but yes. I'm trying to make a distinction between Ditotel and 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 the rest of the Dena group. Ditotel is a joint venture no, between China Telecom and the Dena group. It is the only major joint venture in the group uh okay i, I say group but I, I i i say that lightly you know because in reality uh whilst the uh in terms of shareholders of course you know, the udena group through dito cme owns the lion's share of uh dito tel uh china telecom is not a immaterial partner so uh it has it has brought in it is it brings with it its uh technical expertise not to mention its economic and political cloud in the capital markets, uh, which is also the reason why we're able to generate that kind of debt. And as I said, uh, the uh, the banks that are going to be lending d to tell are 100 percent, or except for that one branch I mentioned, uh, is going to be entirely foreign. So as far as they're concerned, they have no issue with the credit rating of d to tell or the credit evaluation mm-hmm. of d to tell. Mm-hmm. Now, another issue I have to ask this, Sir Eric. Uh, <laughs> The another issue that's been going around, well, last year naman is uh, foreign ownership. Uh, the Senate uh, approved uh, fo- easing foreign restrictions. Will we see more China in uh, in uh, Dito Telecom or Dito CME? Well, or first as, of all, yeah, other players. Yeah, uh, first of all, I'd like to say that the the. Uh, the new legislation, which is yet to be passed and I think approved by the president to be effective, but it's been passed by the Senate, is a step in the right direction, particularly for an industry like uh, Telco, um, which is uh, really one of the most, if not the most, capital intensive uh, industries that you will find nowadays, uh, particularly the market uh, demanding no? uh, global class uh, uh, digital experience and technologies uh, that that, uh, that will be within their reach. No? Now, such kind of uh, uh, capital expenditure is demanded, particularly in a situation where you see transitioning technologies no? from 4G moving into into 5G. Um, now, having said that, closer to Dito uh, telecommunity, the legislation, as we understand it, prohibits. Um, uh, greater uh, ownership beyond 40% for state-owned enterprises. No? Uh, and China Telecom, our partner, uh, is a state-owned enterprise. So therefore, they are capped uh, at their current 40%. But having said that, uh, to your point, um, the industry being capital intensive really gives the, uh, the, the Dito telecommunity uh, far more options in terms of uh, uh, widening its uh, capital base down the road uh, with the new legislation. Mm. So, sir, I gotta push this a little further. Uh, you're Chinese or no Chinese, right? Uh, <laughs> so Chinese, Chinese or, or no, no Chinese? China, China uh, or, or other other uh, foreign investors? Right? Another market mover out there is the upcoming elections. Now, this I gotta ask: What's the elections gonna mean for Dito CME, Dito Telecom? And uh, of course, I got to ask this. Uh, the third telco was approved. Uh, uh, the, the third telco's uh, bid bidding process uh, was made under President Duterte, and with his exit uh, up, uh, this upcoming May, uh, will this have an impact on the business? The short answer should be: We hope not. No? Uh, as as a business, and I've been in corporate life the last forty years. Forty years. 
uh, it behooves every business to be uh, as apolitical as possible. And the only concern it should be the in service of the public that uh, and the customers that they that they cater to. Having said that, I think the third player, as I mentioned earlier, let me backtrack. We're the only developing country in the world with two mobile players, and certainly there is public good in uh, having a third one challenge the incumbents in terms of service. Uh, truth to tell, if you look at the kind of uh, 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 services that we had prior to the, the appointment of a third telco, I think the rise and the becoming of the third telco came as a as an offshoot of customer uh, uh, clamor themselves of uh, of uh, of uh, wanting service. No, uh, there was congestion. If you remember, 2017, 2018, that prompted uh, a lot of uh, consumer uh, clamor no? for better services and. That gave rise to the government actually putting up the bid for the third telco. Now, even before we had done commercial launch, I think the public good that the third player has done is that it put actually the incumbents up their toes, uh, and they've done so by putting more capex no, into their operations. Uh, if you look at their guidance capex prior to the third telco, they were spending anywhere from 35 to 45 billion a year no, as a capital expenditure. Uh, when the third telco was announced, uh, the incumbents actually up their uh, capex spending by as much as three times, and therefore you have already seen the the uh, improvement, uh, drastic improvement of uh, of uh, broadband, uh, mobile broadband speeds in the country from below 10 Mbps, which were slugging vis-a-vis uh, uh, country peers at that time. Now you're seeing the speeds go up uh, anywhere from 35 to 45 Mbps, and certainly that that it has done a lot of public good for consumers. Now, going back to the elections, we feel that uh, a service like this that serves the public good should not have any changes. Uh, add to that, I think uh, the legislators have uh, also favored us and the, and, and the government has favored us with another 25 year franchise. And, uh, and uh, good government dictates that um, if it serves the public well, there, should, there ought to be no change in, in in the um, in the business of uh, uh, Dito CME and Dito Telecom.